Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today on the DCC Guy, I want to continue the discussion of using a voltmeter. This time I'm going to concentrate on using it with DCC track power. Uh, I'll also be showing you uh, another device that will actually measure DCC track power accurately. Well, as you can probably tell from the quality of the uh, video image here, as well as the sound, I'm still working with my Coolpix uh, camera. Still nothing out of the California or the Connecticut Sony repair facilities on my Sony cameras. I guess they'll eventually get them repaired and back to me, but for now, it's going to take a while with this, uh, with this epidemic issue and so many people out of work. So for now, stick with me on this. I've uh, tweaked the output in, uh, in my uh, video processing software, and hopefully I've cleaned up the images and the sound a little bit more. It's been a learning process for me to try to get it all cleaned up. But let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we do uh, talk about using the uh, voltmeter with DCC, I want to point out a couple of things that I think I failed to mention on, uh, on Friday or in the previous video on using a voltmeter. One thing is uh, the convention or standard. Uh, in electronics, you'll find that generally red is connected to positive and black is connected to negative. And you can see here on this voltmeter, that is true. Right here, it shows, you know, the positive being red. Generally, 99% of the time, if you buy a meter of some kind and it has, you know, measuring contacts like these or probes, the red is going to be positive, the black is going to be negative. So this is one that I got about three years ago. And, you know, here's the old one that I've been using for 30 years. And you can see it too is red and black, okay, for positive and negative contacts. So I wanted to make sure you understand that. And, you know, you can use that to measure things like polarity. I had a, uh, an email from a fellow over the weekend uh, who asked me, you know, he had just bought a, a new uh, power supply to use with his power bus for his uh, Switch 8 accessory decoders. And he wanted to know how could he tell which wire was positive and which was negative, you know, so he could wire it into his, his power bus. If you have the red wire attached to a positive wire, and the black probe attached to the negative uh, wire, then it will read positive if you have it hooked up correctly, and it will read negative if it's hooked up backwards. Okay, so that's one way you can use it. And to prove that, you know, let's take a look. This is your standard 9 volt battery. It's marked positive right here next to that positive contact. So for this, I'm going to use this meter. We'll do it backwards so I can show you what I mean about the readout. Okay, I'm going to take the red one and hook it to the negative, and I'm going to hook the black one to the positive. And you can see it's reading out a negative 9.23. So that means, as I've shown you, I hooked it up backwards. Now, if I then switch them back so that the red is positive, the black is negative, I'm getting now a value of 9.22 and it's positive. So that means I've got it hooked up right. So you can use that to test the polarity of any power supply that you purchase. The other thing I wanted to mention is even though I said that uh, um, these voltmeters like this that are designed to work with 50 or 60 cycle power uh, won't give you accurate readings with DCC, they can be used with DCC because you will get a reading and it will tell you if the polarity is correct. So the polarity checks that I was showing you how to do the other day um, will work with this. They just won't be a, an accurate measurement. You can also use it on your track. It will measure track power if it's set on AC. And you'll get a value that's, you know, a, you know, a volt or more um, higher than the actual track power. So you can use it. Just be aware that it's going to be, you know, inaccurate. Uh, you can use it, for example, to see whether or not you've got track power on a section of rail and uh, that a locomotive might not be working on. Or you can use it to move along a, a section of track and find out whether your voltage is staying stable or decreasing as you go further away from your command station. So that's a couple of ways you can go ahead and use these with it. Um, but what I want to show you now is 
a way to actually measure the correct uh, track power or track voltage. And this applies, as far as I know, only to Digitrack. So let me go ahead, focus down here on the workbench, and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so what I have here is the Digitrax Zephyr. It's the old DCS uh, 50 version. So it's, it's not the newest, but it works. And what you can do with these is, if you take a look here on the back, let me pull this up to where I can get to it. You know, we have the standard uh, connector setup that, that Digitrax uses. And what I want to show you is how you can actually measure the DC voltage, or the voltage, using a DC meter or DC me reading. Now I'm going to place one probe tip on one of the rail outputs, and these are marked rail A and rail B. And then this one here in the center is the ground. And what you will see is I'm going to get a value somewhere around, okay, it's 6.94. Now I'm going to move the meter probe to the other rail, the rail output, and I'm getting 6.78. Now, if you add those two together, you're going to get something on the order of, you know, 13 and a half volts. And that's, you know, pretty accurate for what this uh, unit puts out. So that's what you can do. And this works with all Digitrex uh, command stations and boosters. You just measure rail A to the ground and rail B to the ground on the meter or on the uh, command station or booster and add those two together and it will give you a reasonable approximation of what the voltage is. And Digitrax tells you to do this under a no-load situation, which means, you know, no locomotives on the track, no lights attached, nothing. The reason for that is you typically will see a sag in voltage uh, when you uh, put it under a load. So they're specifying their no-load voltage for their track power. Now, can you do that with other DCC systems? I honestly don't know. I have tried with MRC, I've tried with Bachmann. Their uh, uh, components appear to be double insulated, which means there's no external access to a ground contact. Um, you might be able to do it on some of the NCE systems that have a metal case. They might have an external ground. I'm not sure. Check your manual. So, at least with Digitrax, you can measure the uh, track voltage, the DCC track voltage uh, output from the command station or booster using the method I just showed you. But, let's go ahead and take a look at another method. The company that makes um, um, the PSX series of circuit breakers and a lot of other products, DCC Specialties, also makes a device called the... Um, RR amp meter and this is specifically designed uh, with special electronics internally to allow you to directly measure track voltage and track amperage and you can do it this way I've got the command station on still so I'm going to put this right on the track and hopefully you can see it's reading 13.7 uh, volts that's a no load uh, output okay so let me show you what you get though, because they recommend using it with a load. So I'm going to attach this automotive taillight bulb uh, to the uh, other side here. And let's see what we get now. Under a load, it comes out at about 13.2 volts. So we're losing about half a volt. Um, as a result of placing a load on the output. And that's fairly common because typically uh, a, a, a transformer or other electrical supply will often uh, do what is termed sag. And the output just cannot sustain uh, the same level of output, the same voltage or amperage output, as you get when you put it under a load. So that is uh, one way to check with the railroad amp meter. Now, these are also supplied with a set of cables, a pair of, a pair of cables like this, and you can plug them in. I've colored mine so I know it's color-coded, so this will be red here, and I plug it into the red uh, banana jack plug here, 
Okay, and then I can just clip to the rails. So that makes it a convenient way to measure, as opposed to trying to hold it on the track here. And you can just do that anywhere you want. Uh, another thing you can do is, if you want a permanent installation, and I've seen people who use these uh, on the fascia of their layout, you can then hook it up to the booster and run it right onto the uh, track itself or track connections. And you will get a constant readout of the track voltage at any given time. And also, it will tell you the amperage that is being drawn by all the locomotives and other uh, devices attached to your rail bus or your power bus. Okay, so this is a great thing to have if you want to be able to have a constant way to monitor the amperage and voltage of track power on your layout. Now, more recently, um, a company called DCC Concepts, which is located, I believe, in Yorkshire, England, has come out with a device that looks almost identical to this, and it does the same thing. And theirs is designed specifically for being mounted on a track fascia somewhere, or you know, next to your uh, your command station or booster, and it will allow you to actually make these measurements. Um, this particular one comes in several different varieties. You can get it like uh, like this here. You can get a version that has a 9 volt battery connection internally, so it can be used basically as a standalone voltmeter, uh, and uh, you can get it uh, so it's fascia mounted. So those are three options. So go ahead, the uh, DCC uh, Specialties website uh, is no longer active. Unfortunately, due to a, an accident with one of their employees, uh, who was the one who uh, kept up their website, um, they, uh, uh, they lost their website URL. Uh, it expired and this employee was uh, in the hospital and during that period they could not get authorization uh, to basically renew their URL, their website address, and it expired and somebody purchased the darn thing before they could, you know, figure it out and get it working again. So now the DCC Specialties website does no longer exist. What you can do is go to the Tony's Trains website and uh, they are the ones that, you know, basically funded the development of all of uh, the DC, spe DCC Specialties products. So they have moved everything uh, from what I uh, understand in talking with them to their website, all their email goes to them. So it's, it's been a, a change and a problem that you know has occurred at the same time as this cor uh, coronavirus uh, epidemic issue. So you know they're still working on trying to get it all sorted out. But these are available from Tony's Trains and dealers who sell uh, DCC Specialties products. So you can take a look at that. You can also take a look at the DCC Concepts website. I'll put a link to both of these in the uh, in the description uh, to the uh, to this video. So uh, go ahead and take a look at that if you're interested in following up on these. Um, another thing I want to mention: you can also build circuits uh, to use with your standard uh, meters. Um, that will allow you to make accurate measurements. And if, I mean, you can go on the internet and do a search for uh, DCC, you know, voltage circuits, things of that nature. And I did it the other day and there were just page after page of, of these circuits available. That will allow you to use the measurements uh, from your meters and get an accurate measurement uh, for DCC track power and amperage. Uh, I also would point out um, uh, Rob Paisley on his website, he lists numerous pages of circuits, including uh, a couple of circuits for doing the same thing, measuring track voltage with a regular DC, uh, with a regular um, a meter, multimeter like this, and he actually sells a circuit board and a kit, I believe. Uh, so I'll also include his uh, uh, website address so that you can go check that out too. So those are some options you have that will allow you to use a multimeter you already have in your possession to go ahead and, and make these kind of measurements. That's about all I have for today. I hope this uh, 
clears up any questions that any of you might have had concerning the wiring and things that I might not have mentioned in the first video. If there are any more questions, please go ahead, uh, hit me in the comments and ask me uh, anything. If I don't know the answer, I'll find somebody that does. So take it easy, uh, have a good week, and uh, catch you on Friday.